Great, grand, wonderful trick of the day. Here we are again with a third look at Haiku Pro. I want to complete at least one of the ranges here, hopefully in this video, and uh, see if there's any substantive difference between what Haiku Pro is offering for a paid subscription and the other things that are out there. Now, um, before I get into the range, uh, I wanted to show some of those competitors and what they're offering, uh, and also point out uh, one other important thing. Um, what would make Haiku Pro different from the competitors I'm about to show you? Um, essentially comes down to uh, the fact that they claim to be educational and to teach you skills, whereas the other offerings I'm going to show you don't claim that. They simply claim that they have essentially pl uh, playgrounds where you can go and you can test your skills, their challenges. Now, I want to point out that I've already tried one of the ranges, and during that range, I received zero instruction. My ability to complete the first challenge in the range came down to the instructions telling me what I needed to do, and then me either knowing or teaching myself how to do it. They gave me a Kali Linux box, and they gave me objectives, and that's it. That is not teaching. Also, just logged in here, and this is the first time I've logged in since my part two video. I have 300 points, my global rank is 90, and it says I have one range completed, but I did not finish that range. I just finished one of the objectives. I don't even know how many objectives there are. So, okay. So, with uh, Haiku Pro, what you get is access to ranges, but you don't get access to all of the ranges. In fact, there's currently only three that you can access for free, and there seems to be... So here's the thing. You can access Silk Road Part 1 for free, but it's also listed here in their all ranges, or I'm assuming paid ranges, as is, of course, content management systems gone wrong, which is listed here twice for some reason. One of them is locked, so I guess it's showing that this is paid and this is not. And look at how many users have completed it. <laughs> wow, they have <laughs> they have a couple subscribers, and that is concerning. Plankton's Heist got mail. Crawlers, faulty system, bark bark. All right, whatever. Um, so, uh, before I get back into, let's see, should I complete the forensic challenge or should I try one of the other ones? Um, I guess we'll complete the forensic one since that's the one I'm most keen to complete, I guess, if such a thing were possible. But before I do that, let's, uh, let's uh, quick hop over here and look at uh, some competitors of Haiku Pro and see how it stacks up compared to the others. Just a moment. All right, so first up, and um, there's, I want to be clear uh, that there's actually a lot of competitors in this space. Um, what Haiku Pro is offering here is by no means novel. Um, it could be if they actually did what they said they do, but they don't. So really what you're doing is you're paying a monthly subscription service to access virtual machines to practice skills. Um, there are a lot of places out there that do that. And Haiku Pro is not the only one with a subscription service kind of thing. There's lots of them out there. Uh, I, you know, and I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going to uh, fault any organization uh, for requiring capital in order to get these assets and make them available to people. Um, it's just my problem with it is that they claim to be educational, but they're not teaching anything. And the things they are teaching are not really cybersecurity skills. Um, so, like for example, um, SANS has ranges as well. They even call them ranges, cyber ranges, um, which I, I don't know, Haiku Pro, I'm pretty sure SANS came around first. Uh, you might want to consider changing your name. You might have yourself a, a trademark issue here, um, but SANS 
if you're not familiar with them, very well known in the cybersecurity space, um, proven to be, I mean, they offer all kinds of material, some of it for free, some of it you have to pay for, you get your courses, so on and so forth through them. Um, but uh, they do have cyber ranges, and those cyber ranges are essentially the exact same thing. But they claim that they are browser-based challenges. And you can bundle these with a course. The course is what does the educating. The ranges are just challenges. But if you want to do challenges for free, there's plenty of options out there as well. Try Hack Me is a good one. There's lots of different ranges out there. <clears throat> you can. There's even leaderboards, which is... Again, a thing that Haiku Pro makes it seem as if it's proprietary. It's not. Uh, there's leaderboards on all of these. <laughs> uh, there's tons of challenges that are out there. Hack the Box is my personal favorite. And look what you get for free. Uh, this is a free account. I don't, I don't pay for Hack the Box. But uh, you get access to specific machines. And if you do decide to pay, then you get access not to a different set of challenges. You get access to challenges that have since been retired. So you can uh, actually, it looks like they make a couple of those <laughs> available for free too. But you get access to a back catalog of challenges. In addition to that, they also have things like specific challenge boxes, fortresses, which are more complete um scenarios with verisimilitude built in multiple machines virtual networks and so on and you can if you decide to subscribe you you just you you get great value for free you just get more for investing in it and it doesn't claim itself to be educational it's just providing an opportunity to test skills and do essentially what haiku pro is doing which is teach yourself these skills by doing and this is not... Oh, um, by the way, sorry, I forgot. There's a leaderboard here, too. It's gamified. You can earn points and climb the leaderboard and so on. Right? Um, and on top of that, Hack the Box also has, for free, the ability for universities to enroll so that students can join a university team. And I can lead the students through exercises using the challenges. And... On top of all of this, places like Hack the Box and Try Hack Me and so on allow users to create challenges and share them with others, which is not something that Haiku Pro is offering. Haiku Pro designs these cockamamie fucking dumbass challenges where you're a cyber fucking criminal and you're defacing sites and uh, <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. So you get a lot more from other sites for free. If you upgrade, you just get more value. With Haiku Pro, you get one range a day, and then you have to pay them 10 bucks a month to access other ranges, and all of the ranges, still, even if you pay, even if you pay, I know that they just started, so they don't have a lot of ranges right now, but if we get rid of the duplicates here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight ranges. And look, we have one defensive challenge, one forensic challenge, Offensive, 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 offensive. Uh, if you look at this and you tell me, if you're one of these 41 people here that have played this challenge and gave it a five-star review, if you're one of these people, you explain to me how what you're getting here is at all better than what you could get for free at other places. Please explain it to me because I must be missing something. I, I know, I know, 41 people can't be wrong, right? Uh, whatever. All right. Now, I do have a particular exception to the forensic challenge. I am, I am going to go back in here, and we're going to give it another shot. I'm probably going to fast forward through it, because to be honest with you, um, I don't really, don't really expect that there's going to be a lot of interesting things that I didn't do last time that's going to come up. But... Um, let me tell you, I do take exception with the forensic challenge. Okay, I do and design and walk through forensic challenges all the time. You cannot treat them like offensive security challenges. You just you just can't. 
Uh, well, number one, the entire concept of putting a timer on any challenge, what's the point of that? 45 minutes to complete the objectives? Doesn't make any sense. But it makes even less sense when it's a forensic challenge. You don't want a timer. Forensic work is supposed to be deliberate and slow, and you're supposed to spend a lot of time looking into details and creating a report and all of that kind of stuff, which this doesn't mention any of that. Like, I don't care if you know how to use scalpel. If you can't put that into a competent forensic report, it's useless because it's a completely different skill set and a completely different mindset. That said, um, they don't give you access to the internet, so you can't obtain tools that you may need. Which is fine. I mean, forensic endpoints don't have, uh, or shouldn't have, ideally, network access. But they give you a bog-standard Kali, and they're like, here you go. This is everything you need. It's really not. So you have this stupid timer for no reason, and you don't get to use ideal tools for the situation. Instead, you're kind of pigeonholed into using whatever they give you, and it's not really enough. So last time, um, I was able to carve using scalpel. I'm a little rusty in Linux. I don't, it's not my preferred platform for forensic work. So, you know, I, I, it's been years, I think, since I've used Linux scalpel. Um, but um, normally what I would do in those situations, if I'm getting, uh, if my automated tool is failing, what I would do is I would go in and manually carve some files out and see what the deal happens to be. Um, but... I'm not sure that Bog Standard Kali has a hex editor. Let me see. It's been a while since I've had to use that uh, in Kali. Normally what I would do is I would just grab a tool I needed. Um, let's see. There is hex edit. Ncurse is hex edit, it seems. So that might be what our go... Oh, no, you have to install it. I guess we'll check when we get in there. But at any rate, I, unideal tools, um, unrealistic scenario, so on and so forth. Maybe I should just hop to a different scenario then rather than trying to force my way through the forensic scenario. Let me think about this for a second. What am I going to get out of a forensic scenario uh, knowing that I don't have the right tools and knowing that they're giving me an arbitrary timer? Um, yeah, you know what? We already let's let's do a different one. Let's do a different one. Yeah, go back to ranges. There you go. So then, of the three choices that we have here, this one seems to be locked. It's got the lock icon on it. This one does. What is the difference between? Oh, this is oh oh this is two. This is two. Sorry, the font they're using on my screen makes it very difficult to tell that this is a two instead of a one in Roman numerals. So. We got a one and we got a two. Um, okay, then. Um, this is the one that I think they asked me to do in the tutorial. I think they asked me to do this one first because it says how to use Haiku Pro. Okay, well, then I guess let's do this one because maybe this is me. Maybe I, maybe I didn't, maybe I went off the rails again and I missed a step. That could be. So I guess let's do this one here. Uh, how to use Haiku, Haiku Pro. CMS, Vuln Discovery, Web Shells. Okay. Look at all these skills you're going to learn. Offense, support scanning, Kali Linux, NMAP, credential exploitation. Okay, okay, okay. Ethical hacker. After defacing... The, well, okay, so this is where they want me to start, but this seems like it would be after the Silk Road scenario, because it specifically says. After defacing the Silk Road website, the hacktivists discover... When I play games on this channel, I often come across um, issues with writing. Uh, typically, it's because the developer uh, has English as a second language, and I am very understanding and accepting of that. That said, we saw Haiku Inc., at least on their patent. And they seemed to be educated individuals. And they are claiming to be educational. And the key to understanding is comprehension. 
and I am simply not willing to accept grammar and syntax issues on an educational product. So, Haiku Inc., if you ever see this, proofread, please. After defacing the Silk Road website, the hacktivists discover a CMS web page under development, but something is not quite right. Upon closer examination, it appears that this CMS was intended as the backup site for Silk Road. Vulnerable technology is bad for business and worse for illicit syndicates. The Lazar Group won't know what hit them. Reviews. We got eight. Five star. Five star. Challenging, but some minor issues. Five star. Five star. I'm still unclear how to copy and paste from the range for flag submission, but otherwise it was a nice beginning range. How did you complete the box without submitting a flag? Very good range. Thanks, Haiku Pro. Five star. Four star. Man, that window is tiny. Can we pop out guacamole in its own tab? Agree. Calaman. Aerospace. Uh, looks like they launched way back on the 30th. So a couple of days after my first video. All right. Let's play the range and see what range ranges. Uh, content management system gone wrong. One. Ranges feature a limited number of tools and Kali Linux are not connected to the external. Okay, this is the same thing we got before. So I don't know if this is a new thing or if Safety Girl just didn't see this. But yeah, Control Alt Shift is their pop out. montage. All right, challenge completed.
as we wait eternally for there we go all right so uh do do outstanding performance and this um so what did i learn um well uh, haiku didn't teach me anything i had to do all of that on my own uh and if i didn't have like, like I said, I, I don't consider myself the smartest guy, the most talented guy. I don't know everything about everything. Pen testing isn't even necessarily my main forte. Um, but I've done stuff like this before. And if I didn't have that previous experience, quite frankly, I would not have known what to do at all. Because Haiku wasn't teaching me anything. Um, and you can also see it's not it wasn't really that challenging other than my struggling with the web shell which was mostly about trying to find the right fucking thing to use and all that um you know it really wasn't that that much of a brain buster to be honest with you so um but is this better or different than you would get with hack the box or try hack me absolutely not absolutely not this is the, this is the exact same kind of challenges you get on these as a matter of fact if we if we look on hack the box let's say let's say we just go to the challenge uh oh, i'm logged out because i've been sitting here for too long but um there's a an array of challenges some of them have never been solved because they're just so difficult so um no there's there's nothing nothing here at all that is special or proprietary it's just another training system and challenge system not training system uh, because there is no no education here. It's just a playground, which is great because, I mean, yeah, I love places like this. There's always room for another hack the box or try hack me or something like that, but I'm not going to pay 10 bucks a month to do it. So, um, yeah, that's, I, I don't know what else to say. Uh, oh, I got a badge. Can I add that to my LinkedIn profile? That would be sweet. Uh, and in order to complete this intro to ethical, see, intro to ethical hacker. That's what really pisses me off about this. It's not the product, it's the salesmanship that pisses me off. Um, and it's this, intro to ethical hacker. What in anything we just did taught me anything about ethics? The answer is not a goddamn thing. It didn't talk about ethics it didn't talk about utilitarianism it didn't talk about laws it didn't talk about contracts it didn't talk about anything having to do with any of the ethical or legal side of penetration testing it didn't teach me anything about anything to be honest with you because i had to go and look shit up on my own but it especially especially did not teach me anything about that and that's what really grinds my gears on this thing all right, anyway, I got to go to a meeting, so uh, that's it. Probably my last look at Haiku Pro. Uh, my final verdict, I'm not impressed, but it wouldn't be so bad if they weren't making it so bad on themselves by billing themselves as being the next best first novel thing in cybersecurity education, and if they weren't charging people so much fucking money for nothing. You get nothing that you couldn't get for free with Haiku Pro. Nothing you couldn't get for free, nothing you couldn't get better. Hack the box and try Hack Me. Their free solutions offer more for nothing a month. You can pay them to get access to more content, but for free, they have more content than Haiku Pro does. Now, they're in beta and they're a startup, but at this point, it would take them months or years to get to the point where they're offering the same thing that you can get for free in other places. It would take them years to get to the point where they're competing with free services. That's a problem. Don't pay money for Haiku Pro. Use the free services. Get your cybersecurity education from cybersecurity professionals who can teach them to you. Period. The end. All right. Take care.